It's just like, okay, suddenly, or like you've got a leak here. It's like, okay, let's go fix that leak. And then something else happens here. And you're like, hey, let's go deal with that. Yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the learning process over the last year, because again, it's been like, I just need to do things. I, I like my priorities to do things quickly. Yeah. So I'm like just quick and dirty, like, let's just put it out there. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we go back to the drawing board and try again. Right, right. Um, Welcome to another edition of Art of the Bay Sessions. Today, we are joined by our special guest, Malti. How's it going? Hi, I'm doing well, thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah, I like we were talking earlier, like you ran into traffic and I would, I'm always surprised when people uh, don't run into traffic. I know, right? <laughs> it's funny because I never factor it into how long it's going to take to go anywhere, but yeah. inevitably there will be traffic and I really need to get better at yeah, being yeah. like, add on 15 minutes wherever I'm going at least. Yeah, yeah, at all times. Really. At all times, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we always kind of start the podcast with just saying like, yeah, how, how are you doing? I, I hope things are going well, but in general, how are, you, how, you, how are things going? Yeah, good. It's middle of a long weekend, so mm -hmm. it, it's quite nice, I think. I need a bit of downtime. And actually, next month I'm going back to London. Oh, really? So I'm so excited. One of my jobs this evening is to book flights back home. Ah, oh, okay. Um, so I'm like really excited because it's been a long time since yeah, I've yeah. been home. When was the last time that you went back? Uh, well... Before I came to the US. Oh, wow. So I, uh, I came just before Christmas, not last year, year before now. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I haven't been able to go back since. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be the first time going back, seeing my parents. Oh, nice. Um, and all my friends. Yeah, um, yeah. A few of them have been able to come visit during the time, but I'm missing her. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's always good. Like, I know... Time always kind of does that too, where like you just get homesick really quickly. So after all, we're like, all right, I need yeah. to go back at that point. <laughs> it's I, I didn't expect to feel like this, but it's like after the year was up, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to go back. Yeah, I need yeah. to like see my people. I yeah, need yeah, to, yeah. to see the city as well. That's like home home for me. Right, right. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Well, I guess you kind of led into our uh, first question. Yeah. And we kind of, uh, we always ask folks like, um, if you can give us like an overall like recap of your art career or just like your career in general. And of course, I would imagine that starts back at home at that back point. Back at home, <laughs> yeah, back in London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm from London, as I've said. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say my art career, let me be that, uh, took a bit of a detour. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a very non-traditional, I guess, lots of people have non-traditional background. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I was a, I was very keen on art, really enjoyed it during school. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I was very good at school. I, I knew I had a talent then. Yeah. Um, but then thinking about what I wanted to do at university, it was between art school, um, which my art teachers wanted me to do, or go do physics or, or maths. And I was like, okay, got into Cambridge. I was like, let right. me go do the maths and physics thing. Yeah. Uh, loved it. Uh, ended up doing a PhD in physics mm. and then I went into management consulting because I was like didn't want to stay in academia necessarily long term so right. let me try something else and actually it was only when I moved to the US um, for personal reasons yeah. that I I told my husband actually I was like Josh like I I secretly love painting and he yeah. didn't know this about me because while oh. I was a consultant, I just didn't have the time to do it. Right, right. I used to do it a lot during the PhD and I used to like, through my academic career, I had mm. more time. And whenever I'd have extended breaks, I would paint. I would, oh, uh -huh. I would draw a lot more, but I kind of stopped that side and always thought I want to go back. Yeah. I just thought it would be when I retired right, uh, right. but then I had a bit of a career break and, and started doing that again and this career break has become an art career instead yeah, so yeah, yeah. that was really how it kind of started by accident right right um doing it right now I guess yeah um, but for me it was always like I needed time to figure out 
and spend on like what do I actually want to do with my art yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and find that style so yeah. it's been crazy it's been so unexpected it took me so long as to tell people back at home that I was doing this mm, mm-hmm. as well because they were like what do you mean you paint or yeah, I had yeah, like yeah. some partners from my old firm message me being like Malsi I saw your like LinkedIn update being like like since when do you, you do this yeah. <laughs> like what the hell like you didn't yeah. tell us any of this and I was like oh <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, it's 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 really cool. It's it's crazy to yeah. think back. Like a year ago, I, if you'd have told me I was doing this, I would have laughed in your face. Right, right, right. Like, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, it like we were just saying, time just does so many different things. It like does. you don't expect anything to kind of go the way it does. Kind yeah. of yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, w- what was that like for you? I guess while you were in in school, and then just how did you go about like? balancing uh just everything that you had to do for school and then kind of doing these paintings or just learning how to like get into the art space in general like how was that journey like of trying to balance the two yeah I guess I guess at school there was just a lot going on so there were lots of opportunities to get involved in mm-hmm. lots of different things yeah and back then I did ended up doing like marketing stuff for non-profits and charities yeah so, doing a lot of like the the marketing materials, doing a lot of the design work actually. So that's where I did a lot of like the creative side of things. Yeah. Um, and as I've done work with nonprofits and charities over over the many years, I've always gravitated towards the the design work, oh, okay. artwork stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and and then at the weekends, like it's quite re- I find it really relaxing. I also play the piano. Mm-hmm. So that both music and art oh, right, are very right you get into that headspace and hours go by. So if you've got a, a bit of time to spend, I always find it really relaxing and therapeutic to just oh, yeah. create. So it was always more of a, a creative outlet. Yeah. It was that kind of, I guess, the mindfulness, the meditation, all that kind of stuff for me is creating yeah. work yeah. Um, in that sense. Um, and I mean... I loved it, so I'd find time. I'd always find time oh, to yeah. do what I want to do. I would do. imagine, but yeah. yeah, like like how you said, like a PhD in in biophysics. Like I would imagine that's first. That's amazing. <laughs> Congrats! But at the same time, I know yeah. that's a lot of work. Like how how was that? Like yeah, just kind of going through that and then kind of deciding to go and, and do a different switch at that at that point. Well, like, it wasn't at that point because uh-huh. then I was just kind of painting when I had a bit of time when I had a break. Yeah, I I work. Like my working style is I work really intensely on on whatever I'm doing. So during the PhD, I'd work like, I don't know, six weeks, super intense in the lab. I did like an experimental mm. PhD or part of it was experimental. So I'd be in the lab a lot. Yeah. So I'd be like really intensely working and then I'd just take a break where yeah. I'd completely switch off from that stuff and do something very different. Right, and right. And so then I'd like paint, play the piano, like whatever, travel during that time off almost yeah, yeah. so it kind of keep me like re- i guess refill my cup mm-hmm. and like oh, that yeah, energy yeah. source I, I i i like sprint really hard and like work really intensely and then i need downtime yeah, yeah and yeah. then i can like keep doing that and that's quite sustainable as a working style for me yeah so that's kind of how i operated so i'd always have time to like create and i mean i love the art scene in london i wasn't involved as an artist but i loved going and seeing galleries and pop-ups oh, yeah. and there's just so much going on yeah 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 yeah. yeah I was gonna ask you too like uh either growing up or later on like yeah. who, who are some of your like art influences to to, to either inspire you or just in general yeah. just get interested into the field at that point I don't know so I think it's hard because my, my to be fair my my high school where uh-huh. I so I did art until just before I went to university and there was a really like we had amazing art teachers honestly oh. the course that we did was so rigorous and robust right and so i was really fortunate so we studied a lot of different artists from around the world oh nice and and so i mean it, it was just everyone on this under the sun from like really well-known people through to sort of more um like less studied artists as well based on whoever our right. teachers were kind of interested in thought this might be cool or when we try like i when i travel as well i go to all the art galleries mm. where wherever i am and in from london i used to travel a lot around europe and asia yeah, yeah, yeah. um and so some of some of the influences pop to mind right now is sort of stephen wiltshire i love okay i don't know if you've seen some of his work but he does um 
drawings of cities, basically. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, he's incredible, and I remember we we actually studied him, or like we we looked at some of his work in one of my art classes, and that really stuck to me. Yeah. Um, and and when I came to California, I remember being like, oh. Artists in California that I remember is like Wayne Tebold was one of the ones mm. I absolutely mm-hmm. love the way he uses color. Yeah, and so actually when I thought, oh maybe I want to start painting again, I went to the library and picked up a Wayne Tebold book to be like, oh like let me refresh my memory because it's been <laughs> over a decade since I've like actively thought about artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looked at like or like studied art history a little bit, so I started doing that. Yeah. Um. And now there's just so many cool people around the bay oh, that yeah, I've yeah, met, yeah. And, and all the people and influencers have been gathering. It's just, just there's a lot, there's a lot of people. Yeah, and, yeah. And the creative art scene right. in like the Bay Area is is thriving. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I had no idea when I moved here, honestly, uh-huh. and I until I started looking for it, I was like, oh shit, there's so much stuff oh, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, blew my mind a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's. I think it's what you were touching on of exploring different arts in different uh, countries, and then when you come here, I would imagine it's vastly different, but in a good way, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everywhere is different. Yeah. It has its own influences and like niches that are growing um, yeah. and developing. But that's, I mean, that's kind of the beauty of art, mm-hmm. I think, and like the creative scenes. It's all different everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to get into um, the core of like what we're trying to do this season, where yeah. we, we bring in a lot of people who either have uh, vending or gallery or you know or a combination of the two mm-hmm. of just uh, just being involved in different kind of shows yeah. overall. Uh, I had seen uh, on one of your posts that you had said that. Um, make sure I get this right too. <laughs> <laughs> that you were part of uh, eight uh, group exhibitions and then a, a few different fairs and festivals yeah um yeah like how how was that like <laughs> just i know you were saying earlier yeah. like um just not knowing anyone and like how did you kind of start getting involved with everything at that point yeah it's uh it's it, it's funny when i sit down and sort of reflect back i'm like oh shit like i've yeah. ended up doing quite a lot a lot more than i might have expected yeah, um, yeah, yeah. for a short period of time and so when I moved here or when I decided I wanted to start putting my work in front of the public, yeah. for me, the first question was like, well, how can I do this quickly? Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know anyone. Um, so I went, I remember going to a couple of art fairs and I ended up like gathering the courage to talk to someone mm. who looked kind of approachable. She was an artist, <laughs> right. um, amazing artist. And, and she was really kind with her time and really open to that conversation. Right. And I was just like, how did like how did you start doing this because yeah. I loved her work um and yeah she just seemed great and I was like okay how how did you do this like right. what was your path yeah um and she was the one that told me that she started doing art festivals first. oh okay uh-huh. and I was like well I don't even like I was like I don't even know how to like <laughs> I was like I, like I don't even know where to get one of these tents that I see everywhere oh, yeah, yeah. or everyone, like the everybody. wall set up or like I don't even have enough paintings to fill one of these things and she was just like well she just applied and then she had some time and she knew she had to like work towards something so Mm -hmm. and I was like ah okay I can do that I'm like that's kind of how I work to be fair once there's like a deadline I will figure everything out around that deadline and I will just make it happen yeah so I was like okay let let me try apply for some of these festivals yeah if someone says yes, I figure it out at that point kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I did. Um, I th- before that, I did try to apply to open calls for galleries without any success. Mm. And it was quite demoralizing for me personally, because I was like, rejection after rejection. And, and there's no way to get feedback on my work either. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, well, I'm just, there's one like small jewelry that's seeing my work. But I was like, well, I need to just get it out there somehow yeah. more effectively. And so the festivals seemed like the best way for me, at least personally. Yeah. Um, and then I, when I got accepted to the art festival, it was actually, I had three weeks notice. Oh. Uh. So it was really last minute. <laughs> and I had a friend who was visiting at the time. Oh, no. So I was like, well, this week has gone on like this friend who's come from out of town staying with us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've got two weeks to figure <laughs> out how to do this yeah. and it was like a crazy busy two weeks of like research buying stuff fingers crossed and I, and on the way there my my husband he's amazing josh 
um, bigger supporter right. um, of what I'm doing. But he was like, we were driving up together because I was like, I I also can be quite, I'm quite, I'm naturally introverted as well. So I don't, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't really know what I'm even going to say to oh, people. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. So he came for the support and setting everything up. And on the drive there, we were discussing, right, if the walls don't, like, if our tent <laughs> doesn't hold the walls, like we're planning to do, what is our contingency yeah, plan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Because <laughs> we were like, well, we haven't even tried setting it up yeah, because yeah, we yeah. just don't have the space where we live. Yeah. So we're like, well, this is the first time we're going to do it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll you know do some sort of like botched job yeah, for yeah, this yeah. one and figure out for the next one kind of thing. But it went really well. Um, and yeah. that first one was, yeah, really like, I don't know, it's special because it's the first time you're doing it and you don't know what it's going to be like until you do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then sort of over time, I, I, I like carry on applying to stuff and get a bit more confidence and then like upgraded equipment which was right. so exciting yeah um to make my life easier oh um, yeah, yeah and and now it feels like there's a rhythm to it and i'm a lot more comfortable with it and i really enjoy it yeah because yeah, yeah. with galleries um you don't necessarily talk to the people buying oh, your yeah, work yeah. directly um it's not that's not very common mm -hmm. whereas when you're vending um and you're selling yourself at festivals you are literally talking to the people who are interested in your work directly and it's something there's a lot of like i guess the direct feedback which i really love and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just nice meeting people and talking to people and seeing what different people like about oh, yeah, the work yeah. as well yeah. I, like, it, it was really interesting and one thing i would always ask actually everyone who would come into my booth or like start looking in um I'd be like, which is your favorite piece? Because all my pieces are can like they're quite different. And, right, right, and right. everyone would say something different. And that was a thing that really caught me off guard. I just I, I don't know why, but I kind of just thought there'd be like one or two that would be like the standout favorites right, or something. Right, right. Yeah. But that really wasn't the case, oh, which is yeah. which was really awesome to hear. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask you that too. Like, how has it been for you collecting that feedback of like because uh, I would imagine it's like you're there for a couple of hours or even a couple of days. Like oh God, days. Yeah, the ones yeah, I would do yeah. would be like two days, yeah, a whole yeah, weekend yeah. situation. <laughs> how, yeah. how, how was that for you of like uh, either the first time or, or even more recently just yeah. like uh, interacting with people and like how you said like collecting all that feedback, whether it's like positive or negative, just like kind of just taking everything in at that point. Yeah, it's it's intense for yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would say for anyone who's considering selling at festivals <laughs> or doing this, it's intense. Yeah. And um, I'm and the one thing I have started to do is make sure I block out the two days after a festival. Oh right, so right. Like, That's smart. That, That's very like, smart. I need some like proper downtime <laughs> where I do nothing. Like I'll be in like my pajamas all day kind <laughs> of situation. Talk to no one. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really. At first, it was quite intimidating asking for that feedback. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you don't want people to say they don't like stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It, it felt a little bit like I'm putting my soul and like a piece of me is in every piece that yeah, I do, yeah. right? And it's 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 quite intimate. It feels like showing your work and being there physically for people to like reject you or say they like it, whatever it is. So it's quite. I have to like, I emotionally prepare myself for the oh, weekend. Yeah. It's, especially if it's like, since you sell majority of like original work too, like yeah. that, it's like literally the, the the main thing that you have there. At that yeah. yeah. And and so it's, it feels quite, it's emotionally draining these weekends. As much yeah. as it's physically draining, it's also like emotionally draining. Yeah. Um, I, but I, I, I do love talking to people and, mm -hmm. You know, whether it's people who are actually going to buy my work, people who are interested. I love meeting people who are, are creatives themselves and kind of want to start selling their own work. Oh, or like at yeah, that, yeah, yeah. like the point that I was at not too long ago right, and right, considering right. it. And, you know, when people ask me like how I did it, I was just like, I tell them because I, I love that question where I like, you know, ask them to like call me later kind of thing um and we can grab a coffee or whatever because oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know someone was generous with their time and i wanted to like pay it forward and it's it's hard to know what you don't know and it's hard to oh, ask yeah. as well so if someone's willing to ask like i i love that yeah i really yeah, love yeah. that conversation yeah for sure i i think that's why when we were kind of just 
seeing who we can talk to for the next season. Like, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to hear your perspective because I, I know you also kind of just started everything recently. Yes. <laughs> you did the website and going to the different shows oh recently. Oh my gosh! So yeah. I, I built my website as well, by the way. Oh and yeah. And I was like, okay, I, I have, I was like, I don't want to spend money on doing yeah, yeah, all yeah. of this. Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna teach myself how to build a website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cheapest way possible. Yeah. Um, but it needs to look good. So I spent like two weeks trying to like oh, figure yeah, yeah. it all out. But, which I'm very happy with now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a there, there was a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> no, it, well, I, I definitely will go into that one. But first off, it, it it does look amazing. So like when I was like going through it for for this piece particularly, it works. like yeah, I was like it it works. It looks good. I I understood everything. So <laughs> it was good. Uh, but yeah, like with with that, I I mm -hmm. I think it's it's really cool to hear those different perspectives. Like. We've had people who, yeah, who've been doing um, local shows for for a while, like either yeah. five or ten years. Okay. But I also really wanted to get your perspective on that too, and I think it's very inspiring, like how you said, like for other people who are either uh, maybe it was something in their head that they wanted to try out, but now that they see you, they probably yeah. do see an inspiration of like, oh, okay, she's doing it. She's like just jumped in there and did it, like with no, <laughs> with either little or no connections, but you just kind of did it at that point. Yeah. And I think that's very inspirational. It, thank you, I really appreciate that. <laughs> I hope so. And I, I don't want other people to just, you know, it's it's funny that I was just gonna say, the thing I always think when people say this, I'm like, I have to tell myself to be brave. Oh yeah. I, I feel like every time there's like an opportunity or there's something I see and I'm like, I'm not sure I can do it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I just need to be brave um, and just try and if it, if it doesn't work, okay, that's that's okay too. Yeah. Um, and actually, again, jo like going back to Josh, biggest supporter ever. I would right. not be doing this without his support. Right, and, right. And he was actually the one that told me, because um, I, I think we did a couple of festivals and it was, you know, not financially particularly uh, great from the, the financial point of view. It was really useful for the feedback and talking to people, the meeting experience people, and the everything. experience. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But it wasn't necessarily like financially fantastic yeah, yeah. for me. And, right. and it felt like, oh no, like maybe I'm doing this wrong. And he's just like, you're just collecting information. Mm -hmm. This is this is data gathering. Like, it's okay. Right. And he was the one that was like, it's okay. Like, learn from all of this. Like, it's it's fine. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's kind of part of it. Yeah. Like any startup, any small business, there's a period of time that you're throwing money at stuff and then you know, like you're investing in yourself basically. And, yeah, and he was yeah. like, think of this as an investment mm. rather than a, a, a transactional, I'm paying this and I'm hoping to make money out of this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And that was, that was a really good change in approach to help me be like, okay, it's fine. Like, don't worry about that stuff. That yeah. comes later. Yeah. And that really, really helped me. Yeah. We hope you're enjoying the conversation so far. Want to listen to the podcast on the go? We're also available on all popular podcast platforms. Links available in the episode description. Thanks again. And let's jump back into the chat. Uh, well, I definitely wanted to get, of course, to your signature style with, with uh, uh. your amazing artwork. <laughs> uh, Again, with this one too, like since we wanted to go with more of like the Bay Area theme yeah. and everything, as soon as I saw this piece, I knew <laughs> I had to like, all right, how, how can I get this like right, like right away? Yeah. Um, so yeah, how did you in general like was this kind of the style that you were mentioning when you were in in college that um, you were developing, or did this kind of stem off like later on? Yeah, this this kind of when I was in London. So I think the last big piece I did, and it's this huge piece that's hanging up into my in my parents home uh -huh. which i will take a picture of when i'm in london oh okay perfect. um but it was i i really drawn to architecture actually yeah um at some point i entertained the idea of being an architect because i loved the sort of maths engineering and the art stuff and i was like architecture kind of fits that yeah but i was like i don't actually want to be an architect that sounds awful to me so yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. okay maybe not but I loved going to cities and I traveled a lot um, when I was younger and I saw all these different places and every place looked and felt different. And I loved that. So architecture is something that drew me in always. And 
that final exam piece that I did um, for my A-level was, which is like the exam before university for art. Oh, okay. um, uh-huh. I, I had this big piece with like abstract backgrounds again. Um, there was some, it was like mixed media. There. So there's like batik stuff going on with like different pattern work with some like, actually like I used a squeezy bottle to draw in these huge, like very rough line drawn architectural pieces a lot rougher than what I do now. Right, right, and then right. I had some fine painted stuffing because I really like the mix of different styles. Yeah. Um, with like a limited palette. So I loved that. And I don't know, I ended up developing that through those many years of doing art there. Yeah. Um, and so when I came back to it, I kind of wanted to do something like that. I also wanted to do something where I was tra- like traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, I was waiting on my green card actually. So I couldn't, I like I couldn't leave the country at this oh. point as well. So when I started painting, I was like, well, I literally cannot leave. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is like the longest I apart from during COVID. Even like in COVID. I don't know. It's been a very long time right. since I've like <laughs> left a place that I am. Um, and so uh that's kind of how I started doing the the architecture from lots of different places yeah. um and i just love bright colors and and right. I, I love and then i wanted something fi- more finely painted so the flowers kind of made sense and, and for me it was a lot of um in spring in london all the trees along all the roads mm-hmm. are in full bloom so you've got like oh. all these blossom trees and everything but where i live in california i was i there's none of them <laughs> and i was looking around being like where is all the like cherry blossom plum right, blossom right. apple blossom or magnolia trees there are some and pockets of it just where i live they don't like we don't have those trees on the road yeah so that's kind of how i got into the flowers oh, actually so it's, it's a little bit of a kind of circumstantial how i ended up with what i'm doing yeah um but it's all kind of pieces that i've developed now that I look back, I was like, oh, I was kind of doing some of this stuff already. Yeah, yeah And yeah. the combination of styles I was doing already. And and it's sort of right now it made sense living here and what I was seeing around me or what I was not seeing around yeah, me yeah, yeah. And, and drawing on all of that. Yeah. It's kind of how I landed it. Bit of a roundabout way to describe it, but there you go. No, no, I think that's <laughs> everything that you kind of mentioned. It's like it's perfect because you're bringing in things that. Uh, mean something to you and then yeah. also the things that like how you said you embraced back home at, in london and, and just yeah. seeing like what either we had or didn't have here and then just kind of making a mixture of everything at yeah. that point yeah. it, it, someone actually asked me this the other day they're like so do you paint stuff that other people want mm. i was like not really yeah, yeah, yeah i kind of paint what i want to paint uh, and I if see. people like it great if they don't that's also fine yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's stuff that's fun for me to paint and stuff that I'm passionate about because right, right. otherwise it would become such a chore yeah, yeah, like yeah. you spend so much time on these paintings and for me it'd be to spend time on stuff that I don't like feel as invested in mm-hmm. doesn't really make sense yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not something I want to do right right yeah. kind of speaking on that same thing like yeah. I know you do uh, various sizes uh, mm. with everything so how do you go about since yeah it's more of what you want to work on yeah how do you go about um certain designs of making them in certain sizes like from this one to uh i forgot where i wrote it down but yeah i think it was it was a large piece i just 24 by 36 yeah, was, is like yeah. my standard big size now yeah, yeah, yeah um yeah well i I I wanted to go big, but I hadn't painted in a long oh, time. Uh-huh. So I started small. Not this small, actually. This one was a bit later down the line. So I started with 16 by 20s, okay. actually. Uh-huh. Um, so it's like maybe this big. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, mainly because I wasn't feeling brave. Again, going back to being brave. <laughs> feeling brave enough to pick up a big canvas or I feel quite um, like not even sure how to tackle it because it's been such a long time since I'd painted something big yeah yeah so for me it's sort of i was trying to work my way up to painting big again but so during my phd what i really like what really annoyed me about some artists so i felt really frustrated by i would say yeah was when i'd see an artist and i love their work i'd want to like buy an original from them Mm. but they only did big pieces that i definitely couldn't afford as phd student yeah um so i kind of wanted to create like small pieces and and this series kind of came out of that so i wanted to make something that was small affordable but still originals and one-offs not just prints um 
And that's kind of why I started with the six by six because I was like, hey, I can make a bunch of them. And so some people, if they want, they can like, some people have bought like more than one that they'll hang oh, next yeah, to yeah, each yeah. other to make a bigger piece yeah. of fill, a bigger space, or they work just by themselves as one-offs as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, it's pick and mix paintings yeah. that kind of go as a, like, pick, you can pick and mix and they kind of work together because of the style yeah. um, and the colors and sort of themes and everything. But they also work as one-off standoffs, so that's kind of why I started. It's just like a fun way to oh, yeah, like yeah. explore the world again, go back to the whole like <laughs> traveling vicariously through my paintings, yeah, yeah or yeah. going back. And they're all places that I've been as well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Apart from some of the commissions, which I haven't been to, yeah. Um, but most of the like everywhere that I choose to paint is somewhere that I've traveled to or have lived in. Yeah, well, yeah. myself. That gives it more of that uh, authenticity at that point to to say like, oh yeah, like not only do I paint it, it's like uh, obviously I have the experience at that point too. So, yeah, and yeah. it's like this is my like this is the little pizza place around the corner. Right, right. This, this is why like why I ended up here. It's, and for me, that's sort of part of the it it, it feels personal when I paint yeah, these yeah. pieces, and I, I like that. So it keeps me going. Also, like going like deciding to paint a place, it's quite fun because then I. Go back over all photos. Oh, right, right, yeah. There, to yeah. be like, which so I'm going to this city. I've been doing a couple of pieces from Venice, Italy recently, uh -huh. and I went there really long time ago, actually, with my family. So there's all these like family pictures that oh, I'm going yeah, yeah. through as I sort of think about um, the time there. And I, I'm sure that helps too because it, it kind of brings back the memories and gives it more inspiration. And again, like how you said, gives it more of that personal touch at that point. Exactly, and, yeah. and I feel like. It, yeah, it gives you the oomph to like try something yeah. and yeah, do something a bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, now that you've kind of done a couple, like, uh, have you been able to kind of uh, pace yourself of like, okay, like for this one, it takes me this long to make versus like a, like the large twenty four by thirty six. Like, have you been able to kind of uh, get the the estimation correct, or are you still kind of like learning as you go? Still learning. Yeah, as yeah. I, go. <laughs> I think I'm getting better actually. To be fair, I'm getting a lot better with the current style. Yeah. But also, it depends on how I'm feeling. I'm, oh, very, I'm like yeah. a very emotionally driven worker. Like if I'm if I'm not feeling it, I just I find it very hard. Right. And I'll right. have to do something else. So I've got to be like in the zone, and then I know how exactly how long it's going to take. Yeah. 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 Um, but if I'm in the zone or not, that's a different question. I'm getting better at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's amazing that you are uh, just approaching these different avenues because, like, I think that's always the thing that people underestimate is that you just not trying the or just doing the norm and not going outside the box because yeah. then you never know, like, when something connects with people. So, say if you have a piece in, like, a cafe, all of a sudden that one random person that walks in might see it and they're like, oh, like, this is amazing. How do I get in contact yeah. with this person? And then that just opens up more opportunities at that yeah. point. Yeah, and and that's the other thing. I mean, I know with something like like with art, especially with like the more expensive pieces. Yeah. You know, it takes time to make that decision if you mm -hmm. really want that in your home, and that's fine. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the time. Like you don't have to. Like I love people who are excited about my career, even if they like don't want to buy anything like I like that doesn't bother me it's like having those supporters yeah, yeah and I feeling like you have that sort of support and traction is quite important to me and just being like know, generous I think is important yeah yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. um so the, and, and the second question oh, right, I think right, you right. had um which is like how do you like actually go about right sort of exhibition? I don't know yet. I'm figuring that out. Um, so I guess for me, it's like, well, there's a number of paintings that I need that mm. I'm currently working on. There's the whole marketing side of it, which I'm learning. Oh, right, And right. that is my job for next week. And yeah. it's literally like every day there's some sort of marketing <laughs> thing I'm supposed to do or figure out like press releases. and Because mm. I think that's the other thing um, that's important. And, and, you know, part of the learning curve over the last year has been figuring out what, like, how do I get bang for my buck? Or like, how do I op like optimize anything that I do? Right, right, right. Because it makes no sense if I've got this exhibition, I need to like do a song and a dance about it and get people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise it's just like some art on a wall where no one's necessarily going mm -hmm. and that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I'm like trying to figure out how to do all of this right now. And then there's like the practical logistics of like, 
what is it going to look like? Yeah, where yeah, yeah. on the like, where am I going to put stuff? I have no idea. I'm actually <laughs> going to see the space next week. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm going to plan that closer to the date once I've got all my paintings right, right, finished, right. and then I can sort of what I'm planning to do is have all the works like on like around me on the floor, like mm. hanging up on tables, blah blah blah, to figure out which ones look make sense close to each other Mm -hmm. and if there are any themes emerging and groupings that i can see naturally and to be fair that's kind of how i hang my like art festival booths as well it's like what kind of makes sense together um because there is it is kind of curated in that sense not everything goes up on the walls yeah yeah, Um, yeah and so there is this element of like what kind of makes sense together what what works together yeah um rather than throw everything up and fill every oh, yeah, space because yeah. that's overwhelming yeah for yeah. sure what with that kind of process like mm. either for uh, the upcoming show or yeah. when you do the festivals say for example yeah like if someone purchases like one of the items yeah does how, how do you go about i guess filling the space yeah <laughs> filling the space because at that point like yeah. how you were just saying like there's like a symmetry and there's like a flow to it Backups. But then, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have backups. Okay. I, so that's one thing I did learn. There was this, um, there was this festival last year that I did, and I mean it was an amazing festival for me in terms mm. of like selling work. Yeah. But but that was a problem. I sold too much work, and suddenly I'm like, well, I have nothing to hang oh, in my booth. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh no. And I had a festival <laughs> the, the following weekend, and I'm like, like. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What the hell? Like, I don't have any work left yeah. at this point. Um, so it was a very busy week of painting. And that's actually when I started making prints. Oh, okay. Because I was like, well, even if people don't buy my prints, I don't really mind. I, I just need to fill my wall space. And like, again, people don't have to buy now, they can buy later. Mm. But I just want my name to be out there and yeah. people to like see my work. Um, and that's kind of why I started doing canvas prints because oh, I yeah. actually needed to fill a, a festival <laughs> booth. Yeah. Um, but it's worked out really well. And, you know, some people wanted pieces that are sold, but they didn't want the paper prints. So then I was like, well, I have these canvas prints if you're interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of started doing those. Yeah. yeah. So it's exactly how you were saying earlier. It's like there's a, there's a reason why you do things because it – things just kind of happen so you have yeah. to like find the way to kind of like adapt to everything yeah it's point. like find the fix it's like a lot of like band-aids or pluses yeah, and yeah, everything that, yeah. it's just like okay suddenly or like you've got a leak here it's like okay let's go fix that leak and then something else happens here and you're like hey let's go deal with that yeah so yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the learning process over the last year because again it's been like i just need to do things i, I like my priority is to do things quickly yeah. so i might just quick and dirty like let's just put it out there if it works it works if it doesn't we go back to the drawing board and try again right right right. and so it's like i i i don't know like i don't have like a big path drawn out for me by any means yeah there's like some things i hope i like i'm like would love if these things happen and i will like navigate towards them yeah but if things come up that are different i'll be like i won't be like no and close those doors off yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah i feel like th- and, and that goes back to the question on like planning like do you plan like work to uh, like with deadlines and it's like i kind of like plan but have space to maneuver yeah and, yeah, yeah. And change course yeah mm. that totally makes sense yeah <laughs> uh well this this is probably i've noticed more and more that this yeah. is becoming one of the harder questions for people to I'm answer so intrigued. <laughs> uh what would you say now so far with everything that you've done uh either individually or collaboratively has been some of your favorite projects to work on oh that is hard (laughs) so i think so i think that first art festival honestly was Mm. one of my favorites yeah because it was the first time i went and shared my work with people i didn't know yeah um i think that was that was like a like a something I'm really proud of doing because yeah. I I I don't know if I believed that I could do it a little bit. It's yeah, yeah. like, can I really just turn up somewhere in like a town I literally don't know? Right, right, right. With people I don't know and like start selling my work. I don't know. Oh, actually, and and then also the website. I was so proud of like oh, right, building right. my website because this is the first. You know, I decided I wanted to 
be an artist or like sell my work publicly or even share my work publicly because yeah. no one knows what my work is and yeah, I've got yeah. loads of stuff at home yeah um and and so like again the whole like being brave and putting myself out there I think is it's not really a project but it's kind of yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. That, I think that's what I'm like most proud of is just it's kind of just the whole like starting doing this yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, having the confidence to do this. Also the confidence to like introduce myself as an artist mm -hmm. without caveats. Because mm. when I started doing this, even when I started selling work, um, when I'd meet people, I'd be like, hi, I'm multi. I wouldn't, I don't even know what I would say, but I wouldn't say I'm the artist yeah, yeah, yeah. until someone asked. Yeah. Whereas now I'm like, I can introduce myself right, I, right, or right. like I'll meet someone new at some event or like some social gathering. I'll introduce myself as an artist with no caveats. Yeah. yeah. And that took me a long time, surprisingly, maybe not so surprisingly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Completely like, Took the question to someone oh, else. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, there you go. No, I, I, I let anyone answer it the way they feel comfortable with. And I think yours is actually a really good uh, thing to to tell people, too, that it's hard to embrace that when you do start a new journey. Like, for example. Yeah, because it was that. I didn't, you yeah. know, I didn't tell anyone at yeah, home yeah, yeah. for ages. I remember I was really proud of when I, like, did, I, I have a personal Instagram account with people from, mm -hmm. like, London and stuff. I started a new Instagram account for the art stuff. Didn't tell anyone apart from I told my parents that I was like thinking about this because yeah. they kind of knew that I used to want to do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no one else. So when I like finally went public yeah. to people in my past yeah. that I was doing this, that felt like such a big milestone for me because it took me so long and I'd go back and forth being like, today is the day. And I'd be like, nope, like, pull back from it and I don't know why I just I think I felt I think I felt like I'd be judged for it oh, or yeah. something yeah 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 it's like well you have literally someone was saying um someone I literally told my mum the other day they were like what do you like my mum and my parents say you know she, she's now an artist and yeah. people will be like what do you mean yeah. someone was like well she, she's done too many degrees to be an artist yeah, yeah yeah and she was like, what, she can't get a job or something? I was like, this is a job. What do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's that kind of like exactly. old school um, approach to like, what what does it mean that you're an artist? Yeah, yeah. The kind of negative connotations that, necessarily, like, that typically come without the stereotypes of like a starving artist and all of this mm -hmm. that I do not... Like I'm not prescribed to by any means. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I want to set up a financially sustainable way to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, because I need to like feed myself and pay oh, the yeah. bills, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. It makes no sense. Yeah. Mm. No, I, 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 and I applaud you for yeah, just being so open about that because yeah, that's such a hard thing to do. Where when people uh, either from your traditional upbringing or or whatever, yeah, that they just assume that this is what your route is, and then yeah. like you can never really say what route one person is that when they embrace it and just love what they're doing that you should be accepting and proud of them at that point yeah and and i think um i it's it's funny because because uh so like when i when people ask about my like my background they're like did you go to art school i'm like no yeah. but i do have a phd in physics i know yeah yeah, yeah. You know? And, and they're like oh so then you like did your academic thing and became an artist like, no but then i did my like three four years in management consulting yeah yeah and they're like so you've done like the whole science thing you've then gone and done the whole business thing and now you're doing the art thing i'm like yes yeah, yeah. so it's quite funny because i feel like there's been a lot of transition points in my career and yeah yeah i don't know it's uh it's part of life yeah I, 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 I do what i like at the time yeah yeah it's always that thing where like you um there's a reason why you did all those paths in order to get to the place you are now and i think yeah. that's always very true and some people do ask, I like, do you regret like the PhD took a while, you yeah. know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I and I often get that question, like, do or do you regret not going to art earlier? And it's like, well, not really. Yeah, yeah. All the skills that I've uh like learnt over those over those years, super valuable. I don't think, for example, I could have um done what I've done and like set up sort of the art stuff and the art career so quickly had I not spent right. my time in consulting like honestly the skills and tools i learned 
in that world, I think is a big reason that I've been able to like achieve so much, like have so many milestones in that period of time. Yeah. Um, Honestly, like, again, going back to my planning and stuff and like my to-do list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I project manage myself sometimes when I'm like having oh. those days where I can't <laughs> do it. Like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. It turns out I've got like a, like a long to-do list and like notes to myself yeah, like yeah. here, that, blah, blah, blah. So I do project manage myself when I'm like at the points where I'm feeling very lazy and want to procrastinate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, think it, <laughs> I, think, I think that's a good thing. And like uh, when I've talked to other people on the podcast, yeah. they, it's it's kind of like the reverse of what you said where they had like a traditional art back, background, myself included. Yeah. And then once we get kind of thrown into the world, we never actually got that uh, education or financial business side education behind it. So uh, yeah. they've struggled to just kind of they have the skills, yeah. but they don't have that uh, business or uh, education to kind of like know what, how to apply it and how to mm. get yourself out there. Yeah. So it's very interesting, like how, how you were just saying, like, thankfully, based on everything that you've done beforehand and that experience and that education, that kind of gave you that opportunity to get those opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Although I would say what that does mean is I'm spending a lot more time, like, upskilling myself in the art world because I, you know, I stopped, like, I, I haven't, like, we learned much about painting in a long time. Yeah, I haven't yeah. spent that dedicated time on it. Yeah. For, you know, for a very long time. So like now that's part of the things that I do spend a lot of time on. Yeah, it's like yeah. learning and like learning different techniques mm-hmm. or like working with different materials or you know, watching YouTube is amazing. Oh, watching yeah, yeah. YouTube videos and like how other artists do it or like go to classes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it always feels like we're once we all get to the place we are, we are. It's like it, it doesn't. I mean, it matters a lot on how we get there. But then, that at that opportunity, then we kind of just start, yeah, educating ourselves on like the areas that we want to improve on at that. Yeah, point. I was gonna say. I feel like everyone has their own path, mm-hmm. and and you just like when when some like uh, people have asked me like how like again what was your journey and how did you do this? And yeah. I'm like, well, this is why this worked for me it doesn't work for everyone exactly yeah yeah like this this is how i operate and this is why this works for me yeah you kind of just need to like hear like learn how other people have done stuff and like again going back to the whole like learning aspect like gather as much information Mm -hmm. as you can figure out what's going to work for you yeah and just be comfortable with what will work for you and, and always focus on like okay this is how all these other people do it this works for them this part might work for me this part might work right, for me right. and just take those parts and like not worry about the rest because yeah, yeah. the other thing i found is it's it's really easy to get overwhelmed by there's so many different things you can be doing mm-hmm. um and you you can't do every, like you're, you're one person yeah or, yeah or like a, if you've got a team around you or you've got a team around yeah. you but you're still like you're constrained you know right, there's limitations right. so you've got to like pick and choose how you're going to do it and decide what's going to be right for you in, as an individual. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's probably the most important thing. Right, right. I would say it's like what will work for you and how do you want to do it and what feels like right to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't have said it any better. And I, <laughs> I feel based on that, we can definitely yeah. go on and have like a, a, a second part when we bring you back when it comes to like after you do your first shows yeah. and then all these other things because i know there's so much uh so many topics that we can definitely cover i so. would love that yeah it's, it's like it's such a journey it's yeah. it's incredible it's and it's so much fun to talk about as well i yeah. do love reflecting back on it yeah it like how you're just saying like this is all what you've been doing in the past year so it's just like one chapter that i know yeah. we can definitely keep talking about different chapters and upcoming chapters of your life at that yeah, point. yeah exactly i love that <laughs> <laughs> well uh thank you so much um before we head out did you have any uh plugs or shout outs that you, you wanted to give to folks i don't know like uh follow me on instagram um mm-hmm. multi v lee um my website is multi v lee.com mm-hmm. um and i have all my events on the website so check out what I'm up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, we'll we'll do a uh, a fake cheers to all your success and upcoming <laughs> success. And cheers. Cheers once again. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Such a pleasure. Thanks for having me. This awesome. has been awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and I want to thank everyone for tuning in as well. And uh, we will see you next time. Take care. Thanks again for listening. 
If you enjoyed the conversation, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and other social platforms to catch new episodes and updates. Want to learn more about the items and music featured in this episode? Links available in the episode description. Thanks again for listening and take care. How does this fall?